Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch Trading Academy on YouTube. And today we are talking about Patek Philippe, a very sexy and good sounding uh, name in the watch world, especially if you're collecting or investing in watches. And if you have been paying any attention to what Patek's are doing in the market today, you would probably know that watches like this went from an amazingly cheap $100,000 to now almost $300,000 and rising. Last year alone, these were in the twos and now they're in the threes, which is pretty crazy, right? Imagine investing in watches and actually making money. Can you believe it, right? It's pretty crazy, right? I've been saying that for like years, but people don't listen to me. But anyways, so in case you want to learn how to actually invest in watches and don't really understand where to get started or if it's for you or not or how much money you need, because obviously most people think you need hundreds of thousands of dollars, you could start with as little as thousand dollars, access to a post office and a computer, and there's a free training in the description for you to go ahead and learn how to do that. And yes, it is a free training just like the video you're watching now on YouTube that is free. But uh, what we're talking about today is actually the conspiracy of Paddock Philly because there is an actual very interesting rumor going around in the watch world, uh, which is that potentially the data that you've been seeing come out of some of the baddest and craziest auctions of Paddock watches uh, all over the world are actually not real data, that's right. There is a, a rumor floating around that when you start seeing 5711 uh, Tiffany Dial watches for $6 million or 5711 Blue Dial watches for $250,000, it is actually Patek Philippe's buyers themselves going out and buying such watches at the auctions to raise the value of their brand. Now, on the surface, you might just be asking yourself, well, how does that make any sense or why would someone actually do that? Why would they go buy their own watch at a record number, uh, especially if they're not raising their prices in their boutiques? So why would that make any sense? Because they're not gonna benefit from that anyways. And reality is, that isn't actually true. It, there is a lot of benefit if this rumor was found to be true for it to actually be happening. And I wanna point you to a, a story that I once uh, understood, and I kept saying, like a lot of the world is playing in NFTs uh, and crypto, and I've been saying for a long time that crypto is a very dangerous thing to play if you don't understand investments because it has a lot of the narratives that penny stocks had, which was a bunch of people promoting the idea of people getting very rich off of very little investments, uh, pumping all of this dollar into the market and then dumping the stock themselves once it went up, uh, leaving those people that didn't really understand what they were doing with very little money, right? So these pump and dumps were very common in the penny stock market, but it then became the thing of crypto. So to me, it's always kind of like smelled weird. And while I'm personally a long-term crypto investor, very, very little, I should say, but uh, it just smelled weird to me. So I never really got into it as a measure of like, I need to go full time into this or it makes sense. But one of the things that I understood about NFTs, which was, you know, the technology around it and everything else made a lot of sense. But I also saw whenever a market is new, you see a lot of people exploiting these markets. So you see one set of pictures come out and you see record numbers and so on and so forth. And, and you get these promoters basically pushing these NFTs and everyone else comes up with an NFT and everybody thinks every NFT is gonna make money. Basically it's the euphoria or so we would say in a market. Now the issue with NFT and crypto versus watches is that watches are tangible assets and have 30 years plus of people with actual money that want them and buy them versus crypto doesn't and nor do NFTs. So where am I going with all this? Well, there was a story about an NFT company. I don't remember who it was, so don't quote me on that. Uh, this story was basically of someone that owned an NFT and then ultimately went to, that NFT went on the, uh, went on the marketplace to be sold and it sold for like some record ridiculous number, which was like something like $20 million. And it was only like some bullshit, like 200K like investment to begin with. So someone made bank basically. And later they discovered that the person that actually bought that for $20 million was basically the person's own company, but a different company that, that they owned that basically bought the NFT from themselves. They basically swapped the NFT hand from one company to another and there was something really magical that happened. Everybody said, well, that doesn't make any sense. And it makes so much sense because basically that person gave themselves 
a $20, $20 million crash if they wanted to devalue that NFT because they purchased it from the business. So it would be an incredible tax reduction. But one more important than what it did is it proved and it gave people more excitement over the idea that NFTs were money and they were going to make money. So more of that line should be sold. So imagine if you're holding uh, an NFT of, let's say, a piece of wood and there's seven of these pieces of wood in different colors and everything taking their place. Now, this, these NFTs, whatever, are, are one of seven, right? So you have all that. And then what you have is one of them sells for X, Y, and Z amount, right? But the, uh, the other ones, therefore, now have more value on the basis that that one sold for so much more. So technically, even though you paid yourself, you made significantly more value, right? So the entire idea is that if you have a tax write-off or a gain from buying your own NFT, then it made sense because it would create public perception that these NFTs are going up or and it would give you a tax advantage on the other end if it didn't work. So ideally, that makes a lot of sense. So what would be the benefit of Paddock buying their own watches? Well, let's analyze this for a second. If Paddock wanted their watches to be so wanted that they guaranteed that jewelers continuously made money that would push aftermarket used sales up to a point where people would even desire their units even more, well, all they would have to do is encourage these jewelers to keep charging 100, 200K over because of limited supply, and they would have to just give jewelers ammunition to do that. And the argument would be, what better ammunition than giving them auction data that the entire world is watching, making not only jewelers fight themselves for the next big wave of dollars, but also make public perception and basically this information go viral over the internet, pushing regular consumers to purchase more of these both in stores and also with secondary markets. And while we know that these houses that are privately owned like Paddock, AP, RM, et cetera, do not like secondary markets basically reselling their watches, they also understand that it's vital that secondary markets keep doing it at a higher dollar so it makes their original stock even more valuable than ever before. And if I can argue that as they're going through three to four price increases month after month or year after year, you're also a lot less likely to notice when the gaps are getting significantly different. So I think there's something to this rumor that could be true because it would make sense. Now, while I have no data and I want to be fully transparent that I have no concrete evidence of this to be true or not, but this does prove, uh, or this does at least raise awareness towards this path that, you know, for ages I've always said that the entire jewelry industry is one giant conspiracy machine, but something that's been ongoing forever is jewelers basically buying their own inventory, buying the entire market only to raise price on certain inventory. That's been going on forever, so it's never been the, the concern, but the big concern has been what if manufacturers were actually engaging in this behavior even before jewelers and all jewelers did is basically learn it from manufacturers? It'd be pretty crazy, right? But it could be a possibility. So what do you think? You let me know in the comments. Do you think that a house as powerful as the Patek Philippe house would compromise or jeopardize their own reputation by potentially doing this uh, and just really good at it by hiding it and making it seem like a normal transaction? Or... Is this just all crazy talk and really 5711s are really bringing 250,000 at auctions and Tiffany dolls are bringing 6 million at auctions with no other play there? Because my biggest question has always been, why would a watch sell for 250,000 at auction where it can openly and easily be bought brand new from just about every other outlet for 150,000? So... Historically, that just doesn't make any sense. So I never understood how that made sense. And since I couldn't make sense of it and that rumor came along, it started to make a lot more sense this way. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think this rumor is true? And more importantly, make sure you like, turn on notifications, and subscribe for future videos on the watch market and of course, on how to become a better investor in the game of watches. So we'll catch you on the next video for Watch Trading Academy.